Hello and welcome to topic five, joint ventures. So joint venture is a type of a joint arrangement and IFRS 11 covers reporting standards for joint arrangements. Now, as defined in IFRS 11, a joint arrangement has following characteristics. The parties, there has to be more than one party involved, two or more. The parties are bound by a contractual arrangement. And this contractual arrangement gives two or more of these parties joint control over the arrangement. That's as per paragraph five of IFRS 11. Now there are two broad classifications of joint arrangements. They could be joint operations, which we will talk about in topic 10, or joint ventures. Ventures. A joint venture is a joint arrangement under which the parties that have joint control over the arrangement have rights to the net assets, i.e. the shareholders equity of the arrangement. And these parties are called joint venturers. A joint venture shall recognize its interest in a joint venture as an investment and shall account for that investment using the equity method in accordance with IAS 28 unless the entity is exempted from applying the equity method as specified in that standard. That's paragraph 24 of IFRS 11. Now, the accounting issues that exist related to joint ventures involve the question of the acquisition differential. Now, this acquisition differential can only arise if the interest in the joint venture was acquired by the venturer after the formation of the joint venture. Now, if there were an acquisition differential, then in a manner similar to investments in associates, the acquisition differential will be allocated to fair value differences of identifiable assets and liabilities, and any unidentifiable difference is allocated to goodwill. For the fair value difference is allocated to the identifiable assets and liabilities, the fair value differences are amortized over the remaining useful life for the assets and the time to maturity for the liabilities. So this is similar to what we learned for investments in associates in topic four. Another accounting issue that we may encounter related to joint ventures would be intercompany profits and losses. And this again is treated in a manner similar to that for investments in associates. Only the venturer's share of unrealized profits or losses need to be eliminated. And there is similar treatment for losses unless there is uh, evidence of reduction in the net realizable value of the asset, in which case the entire loss is recognized immediately as indicative of an impairment. Now, because joint ventures can be formed, um, there can be initial contributions to the joint venture. Contribution by the venturers of cash are recorded fairly simply, debit in the investment in the joint venture and credit cash. However, when there is a contribution of a non-monetary asset, such a contribution should be recorded at fair value. And if the amount, the fair value of the asset transferred is different from the book value, the resulting gain or loss um, will be booked depending on whether the transfer has some commercial substance or not. The concept of commercial substance was first covered in introductory, in intermediate financial accounting. Uh, in the context of exchange of assets. 
And essentially, commercial substance refers to the to a difference in the nature, the timing, or the amount of cash flows to the parties. So if there is a change, then the two parties are left in a different economic situation than prior to the exchange. And um, the situation is the exchange is said to possess commercial substance. So a similar uh, definition applies for contributions to the joint venture. Now, if the contribution contains commercial substance, then the portion of the gain related to other venturers is recognized immediately. And the gain that relates to the venturer's ownership can be either treated as unrealized until the asset transferred is sold to an unrelated third party or recognized over the remaining useful life of the asset that is transferred. Now, uh, For this course, we will follow this latter approach of recognizing any gain attributable to the venture over the life of the asset. If no commercial substance exists, then the entire amount of the gain is considered to be unrealized unless the venturer receives assets, for example, cash, maybe some other asset as well, in addition to their interest in the joint venture. If additional assets are received, then the assets received are considered to be proceeds from the partial sale of the assets to the other unrelated venturers. And a gain for the portion of the asset that is deemed to be sold can be recognized immediately. So a shortcut would be to calculate the amount of gain to be recognized immediately in a situation where there's no commercial substance as follows. You'll recognize immediately the gain on transfer equaling the total gain times the fair value of assets received divided by the fair value of the asset that was transferred to the joint venture. Now notice if no cash or any other asset was received, the fair value of assets received will be zero. Zero times the total gain will be zero and hence no gain will be recognized on the transfer. If on the other hand, there was some positive value received upon transfer to the joint venture, then a proportionate amount of the total gain is recognized immediately, and the rest of the gain is deferred and will be recognized over the life of the asset as we did for the commercial substance scenario. And this is a very brief video. We will learn the topics better when we do examples in class. Until then, we will leave things as such.